James chapter 1 verse 2 the New Living Translation says their brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider it an opportunity for great joy the Passion Translation says my fellow believers when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulty see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy you can Habakkuk 3 verse 17 the Amplified says though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines though the yield of the olives fails and the fields produce no food though the flock is cut from the fold and there are no cattle in the store yet turn to your neighbor and say yet say yet I choose yet I choose to rejoice in the Lord I will choose to shout in exaltation in the victorious God of my salvation the Lord God is my strength my source of courage my invincible army he has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility though the fig tree doesn't blossom though there are no fruits though there are no cattle though my boss is acting up though my marriage is on the rocks though my finances are messed up though my kids are misbehaving nevertheless I will fix my face turn to your neighbor and say fix your face turn to the other one maybe their face is not all that here turn to the other one and look at them and like fix your face fix your face <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. It comes to illuminate. It comes to make us more like you. It's like you breathe upon these words. Breathe upon our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My, my son, Joel, is a very um, dramatic boy. He has a personality, a very huge personality. Um, he makes... Faces. If he's unimpressed with you, you would know. His face. Like, what are, what are you doing? Like, seriously. He came out of the womb, like, with a face like, what took you so long? <laughs> like, I was just six pounds. Like, I, I was in the gym, in here, trying to keep my weight down. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. I remember the day we gave him an immunization shot. He had this face. He had this face like we had just betrayed him. <laughs> so my, my, my son has faces. So we learned how to tell him, fix your face, like in public. Like we would go out and somebody would give us food and he would taste the food and be like, come on, we're outside. We can discuss it in the car, how unimpressed we were with the food. But right now, fix your face. Like, <laughs> Fix it. Go punch it. I'll give you a reason to frown. Um, now it's it's easy to tell Joel to fix his face because he's a child and he doesn't really have problems. But it's difficult to tell an adult to fix their face because we have real problems. We have bills that are not paid. We have marriages on the rocks. We have kids that are acting up. We have jobs that are about to fail. You've heard a rumor that they're about to fire your department. You've, there are all kinds of bad things that are happening right now. Even if they're not happening to you, you put on the news and you hear all sorts of things that are happening. There are real struggles. I'm not here to belittle your struggles. It was just um, 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 awareness week, mental disorder awareness week last week and if, if we are frank, people are more depressed, people are more stressful, people are frowning more, people are anxious more, people are more stressed out. We live in a world of stress. Bad things are happening. We are stressed. We are struggling with all kinds of things. There is nobody in this room Nobody who's going to attend the other experiences we're going to have that is not struggling in some way. We are struggling. So how do I have the right 
to come up here and ask you to fix your face when everything around you suggests that your frown is justified. What gives me the right to come and tell you that you should have some joy even when hell is breaking loose or hell is about to break loose? What right do I have? If I was here to prove that we are struggling, I will send us all home, put on the TV, and you will see all the proof that you need. Look at your bank account, 17.63. That's the account balance. When you begin to have those odd fractions at the end, like 87 or 58, just some random things that happen back there. <laughs> you don't know how to round it up. Round it up to the first decimal or just all together. And what's up? Not only are struggles real, Jesus guarantees them. In Matthew 18 verse 7, it says, troubles and obstacles to your faith are inevitable. Luke 17 verse 1 says, one day Jesus taught his disciples this. Just imagine, Jesus is like, I'm about to teach you something. Betrayals are inevitable. Mic drop. No, 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 come back. No, 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 come back. But Jesus is like, you are going to have issues. You're going to have issues. That going, there's going to be trouble. My assignment today is joy. My assignment today is laughter. My assignment today is fun. My assignment today is smile. But how can you tell people who are having real struggles to smile? Because I'm not asking you to pretend. So what is joy? The team came up with this. Joy is the excitement and expectation that comes from knowing God is in control. Joy is finding... The God side of every struggle. Joy is the external manifestation of an internal reality of which we are convinced. Joy is an external manifestation of an internal reality that God is able. Joy is an external manifestation of an internal reality that God is greater, that God is stronger, that God can provide, that God can protect, that God is a healer. Joy is an external manifestation of an, a reality I am convinced about. But the mistake or the thing I think that is happening now, most of you think I'm using joy as a synonym for happy. But joy and happiness are not the same thing. Joy is an internal decision. It's an internal posture that you have. Happiness is an externally triggered feeling that you have. Habakkuk says, even though the fig tree will not blossom, yet I choose. Yet I choose to have joy. Joy is eternal. Happiness is transient. It passes. When the trigger ends, it ends. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the result of the Holy Spirit walking on your life. Happiness is a reaction. It's an effect of an event, a person or a place. Joy is contextual or is not contextual or circumstantial. It does not vary based on what is happening. Happiness varies based on what is happening. To the degree I'm excited is the, to the degree I have been triggered by what my scenario is like. The person, the place, the events. Joy is an active process. I choose to have joy. Happiness is a reactive process. You react to something. I like the food, it makes me happy. I like the movie, it makes me happy. I like what you said, it makes me happy. I like what you're wearing, it makes me happy. It's easier to be happy than to have joy because joy requires you to change. It requires you to change. Happiness is easy. The one number one reason why happiness is easy is because it is easier to outsource the triggers of how you feel. What you said made me upset. What you wore made me upset. What you did made me upset. I'm not happy because you. I'm sad because you. I'm worried because you. It's easy to outsource it and not be responsible for our lives. What my dad did to me 10 years ago, what my brother did to me yesterday, what they said the day before, yes, it's very easy. <laughs> I bear no responsibility. Number two, it costs me nothing to be happy. A cup of coffee, a Netflix movie, a nice bed, nice car, compliments. 
It costs you nothing. If I say you look amazing today, what? Me? What? This old dress? Seriously. Pastor Vic. Bro, I, I, I like your shoes. Are you serious? Are you serious? We, we like it. We respond to it. That's happiness. It costs us nothing. It's easier, number three, to pretend to be happy. It's socially acceptable to pretend to be happy. Go on Instagram and smile, even though you've been crying all night. Go on Instagram and post what food you've been eating, even though that's the only meal you've had all week. Balling, eating breakfast. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? <laughs> Seriously, it's easy. It's easier to be happy. But if we are honest, happiness is not working. More people are taking their lives. 18.1 million adults in the U.S. have an anxiety disorder. 40% of the adult population in this country. People are resorting to addictions because happiness is not working. Happiness is not working. Joy is hard. Joy is a process. Joy is a long process of changing. It's a long process of the Holy Spirit working on you. Happiness is not working. And if we are honest, most of us have just been happy and have really never experienced joy. We've moved from one trigger to the next. A trigger at work, a trigger at home. Your car is a trigger. Your bank account is a trigger. Your satellite TV is a trigger. Your Netflix account is a trigger. A cup of wine, a glass of wine at the end of the day is a trigger. Trigger, trigger, trigger. And none of us really, if we're honest, most of us have never really experienced joy. And the difficulty about joy is the ease about being merely excited or happy. When I'm happy, I, my happiness can be a distraction from what is going on. I don't want to deal with this right now. I'm just going to go and see a movie and come back to this. I don't want to deal with this and I'm just going to go sleep and come back. I don't want to deal with it. It's, it, can, it can be a distraction. But joy forces you to confront the struggle. It forces you. That's the dichotomy of joy. Is that it forces you to look at the struggle. Habakkuk 3 begins talking about the faithfulness of God. If you read it from verse 1, God is one. Stories of what he did in Egypt and what he did with, with, with their fathers. And he's talking about, the, the prophet is talking about stories. God did this and God can do this. God did this. And just when you think the story is just all going to be good. He says, though the fig tree does not blossom. Though the olives don't bear, though everything goes haywire, though my life is a wreck, though my marriage is a wreck, though my business life is a wreck, yet I choose to rejoice. Yet, there are two realities. My life is a mess, but God is victorious. So I'm torn. I'm torn because I'm forced to face the two realities. And the most important word there is yet. Yet means at the same time, nevertheless. My bank account is a wreck. At the same time, God is a provider. I've just been diagnosed of cancer. At the same time, God is a healer. It tears me apart. It tears me apart. Because I have to acknowledge I'm struggling. But I also have to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. That's not happiness. That's joy. Jesus came to die for us. Mama, just the night before, he's kneeling. He tells God, you know that plan we had? I don't want to do it again. In Matthew chapter 28, 26 verse 39, it says he fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh Lord, oh Father, if it is possible, if we can have a plan B, <laughs> let this cup, I think angel, there's an angel there that wants to do this. I don't want to do this again. Let this cup Pass over me. Nevertheless, Peter had fished all night, tried to at least, and caught nothing. Luke 5 5. 
Jesus comes and says, throw your net back in the same place where you failed. Apply for the same job you were rejected for. Apply for the same loan you were rejected for. Jesus, I've tried. It has not worked. Apply, start that business again. I know it's failed four times. I know you've tried and tried and tried and tried. Talk to your husband again. Talk to your wife again. I know you've tried and tried and tried and tried. Do it one more time. Peter says, I have tried my best. It has not worked. Nevertheless, it forces me to confront two realities that are happening at the same time. At the same time. So, you understand that sadness is not the opposite of joy. Because sadness is the way I feel. It's a feeling. Joy is a decision I make. So, I can be sad and have joy. I can cry and have joy. I can be in pain and have joy. I can be in discomfort and have joy. I can have sorrow because of a loss and still have joy. I, 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 can, I, I, I can bend over backwards and scream because of anguish and still have joy. Because the opposite of joy is despair. Despair is the absence of hope. The opposite of joy is an absence of hope. Because joy is rooted in hope. What makes me have another reality to consider is that I have hope. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. We skip and we go to faith when really the starting point is hope. I hope that God heals me. You know what? God can heal me. I'm going to act like God can heal me there in joy. Hope is what births joy. It's a manifestation of faith. Joy is a manifestation of faith. It's an expression of our anticipation that God is going to come true. It's a manifestation of hope. It's an expression of yet. It's an expression of at the same time. It's an expression of nevertheless. Joy gives birth to praise and worship. It gives birth to thanksgiving. It gives birth to all kinds of nice, nice things that we do that makes no sense. You are smiling, you are laughing, you are still joyous and everybody knows that you just had a disease that could kill you and nobody understands why you're still serving and why you're still smiling, why you're still volunteering and why you're still on the dream team and why you still work for God and you still give to God even though your bank account is red and you still give your time. Nobody understands because joy it's a decision. It said, consider every obstacle that you have an opportunity for great joy. That means happiness is measured in the feelings, in the expression. Joy is measured in the op opposition. The greater the opposition, the more joy I have. It was just my marriage and I was at level one joy. And now all of a sudden my job is being trapped in level five joy. Because the more opposed I am, the more opportunity to see God work in ways he has never worked before. Hence, more joy. How do I get joy? <laughs> Number one, you ask for joy. Joy, nobody is naturally a joyous person. Joy is not a feeling. It's not a... Your chemicals in your body don't make you joyous. Your body is not wired to be joyful. Joy is a deeply spiritual thing. It's not happiness. Happiness, we can be happy or sad. We are wired. There are chemicals in our bodies that make us happy or sad or show we're happy or sad. Joy is not wired in your body. You don't know how to be joyful by yourself. Because it's, 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 it's a non-natural reaction to pain. Pain should hurt. Hurt should make me scream and be sad. In the joy equation, pain hurts. But I know I have a God who can relieve all pain. So I'm joyful. So none of us naturally know how to be joyful. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. As the Holy Spirit works on you, he changes how you act in certain situations. I should lose my mind right now. 
but I have joy. <laughs> I should not be smiling. Right? I should be in the parking lot and just telling them, just go, just go. Seriously, I've had a rough week. Just pack your car. You're an adult, you can pack your car. Did anybody usher you to a parking lot at work on Monday? Why should I? <laughs> but you have joy. And they're like, he must be, everything must be working out for you. No, everything is not working out for me, but I have a God who can work everything out. You ask for it. <laughs> Talk to your neighbor and say, fix your face. Fix your face. If you're not smiling by now, fix your face. <laughs> Number two, get in God's presence. Psalm chapter 16 verse 11 says, and you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In God's presence, we find joy. I did say in church. Because if it says in church, then it's only on Sundays you have joy. But you can have joy at work. Because you can summon God's presence. You carry the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. That's God's presence. And the thing about the presence of God is that it reminds me of who he is. If you come into my presence, you're reminded of who I am. I have an accent. I can come across as ABC. I am this kind of person. I smell like this. I am. When you get into God's presence, it reminds you of who God is. So when things are going haywire, just get into God's presence. And you're reminded, oh, he's a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a healer. He's a provider. His banner over me is love. He cares for me. I can actually trust you. In God's presence, you can count your blessings one by one because you are reminded the beauty of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving is that it reminds you. It reminds you of who God is. I was with my son on Saturday, yesterday. He was like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm going to die. I'm going to starve to death right now if you don't give me food. And I, I, I just taunted him. I was like, have I ever allowed you to starve? Have I ever let you starve? He was like, no. Okay, I'll be fine. Because in God's presence, you realize he has never failed you. Number three, hang around other people who have joy. Misery loves misery. Misery loves the company. Break the cycle and find people who have joy. I'm not saying find people who pretend. I'm saying find people who are going through hard times and tell you they're going through hard times, but at the same time tell you that God can do it. Find people who have real joy. So how can you know joy when you see it? Joy can be known in speech. You are not cussing people out. <laughs> Someone cuts you off. I will. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. That's not joy. When people come into this place, why are we I'm not teaching you this just for joy. This is who we are. Nobody's going to care how much you love them, whether you love beyond your preference or not, if you're frowning. If you cannot say a kind word. If you cannot get over the struggle of your week and say something good. When people come in here on Sunday, they want to hear words that are birthed in joy. They want to hear words of hope and words of comfort. The church is the hope of the world. The church in a world that is breaking down in despair, a world that is more depressed than ever. Stories of pastors even taking their own lives. Kids are taking their own lives. Our words should give them 13 reasons why God can come true. Hope and encouragement. This woman... In 1 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, Elisha met a woman who did not have a, a child. The woman had made a room for him. And in, in appreciation, he prayed for her to have a child, and she has a child. This child one day just dies. The woman takes the child to the room she had made, and she puts the child there, and then she walked to where he was. 
When Elisha saw her coming, he sent a friend, a servant, and was like, go and find out what is wrong. Ask her if everything is okay. The servant gets to the woman and says, hey, ma'am, are you okay? How's the family? How are the kids? How is your husband? How is everything? Because your face. Woo! She says, it is well. Wait, what? Your son just died. This woman was not pretending because when she finally meets Elisha, she falls and she breaks down. But she says, it is well. It is well. We're fine. It is well. It is well with my soul. My job, I might lose my job tomorrow. It is well. I might lose my, my spouse tomorrow. It is well. I might die myself because I have an untreatable disease, but it is well. My kids are messing up, but it is well. My money is, is, is funky right now, but it is well. I'm about to lose my, I'm on meds right now because I have an anxiety disorder, but it is well. I have an addiction that is taking me out, but it is well. My words must reflect joy. Our words, when people come into this, when we meet people on the streets, when we serve them, we have just few minutes to give them a dose of joy. Because our joy can be happiness for them. Our joy, listen to this, can be happiness for them. And happiness then can lead to joy for them. But first of all, they want to see why there is hope. They want your words to be life for them. At I-5 will be a church where our words are life. Where our words are life. We are not complaining people. We are not grumbling people. We are not people who just say what is wrong and what is wrong and how it is wrong. We'll talk about the faithfulness of Jesus. We'll talk about how Jesus can come true in the midnight hour. We'll talk about when Jesus shows up in our weaknesses. Our, his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. He is a deliverer. Just when the devil thought he has you down, God shows up and our words must show that. Joy is seen in your attitude. The Greek word for joy means cheerfulness, a calm delight. If you look at Galatians 5, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You can't have peace if you don't have joy. You can't have patience and long-suffering if you don't have joy. It's all built on love. And your love for God produces a joy. That you know everything is going to be alright and then you have peace it keeps your head up we don't have joy because we don't understand the power of God's presence we say what we want to say we behave like we're down and we're standing and we're ushering and we're parking cars and we're dealing with the kids and we're serving and we're ushering people to them and we're also downcast and we're just also sad and we're also no Hold your head up. Behave like God is your father. Now, there's a feeling you have woo, when you have a bill that is due on Wednesday. You look at it, it's due on Wednesday. But you know you get paid on Tuesday. And on Monday, you have this sense of calm. Like, come on, we're, we're, we're fine. We'll be fine. I know there's nothing on the account right now. <laughs> but on Tuesday, that joint is going to heat. And on Wednesday, I can take care of the bill. There is a confidence you have that you're not shaking, you're not in despair, you're not worried because it's going to hit on Tuesday and you can take, we have to live our lives like we know God's faithfulness is going to hit just in time. That God's power is going to hit just in time, just before I lose my mind, just before I lose my marriage, just before I lose my business, just before I lose it. God's faithfulness intervenes. When people get here on Sunday, when we meet them in the streets any day of the week, when you go to your job, when you go to your kids game, they are looking for evidence in your attitude. They are looking for evidence. Joy, number three, can be seen in your action. You're smiling, you're dancing, you're jubilant you're laughing why are you laughing you have no reason to laugh I have a reason to laugh because Jesus is alive I have a reason to laugh because he moves mountains I have a reason to laugh because he raises the dead I have a reason to laugh because he heals sick people I have a reason to laugh because God is able
this this right here is not for you understand I know you're being a little oh this is for me Pastor Victor you're talking to me yes but this is why I'm saying what I'm saying we will be a church that laughs at our struggle we will be a church that can still have fun when the economy is messing up. We will be a church that can still smile when all hell is breaking loose. We will be a church that can sing and can dance and can hug and can smile and can laugh beyond our struggles because God is able to do exceeding far abundantly more than you can ask or think right up on your feet. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. We must be a nevertheless church. We'll be a church that lives beyond themselves. Beyond. We'll be a church that loves beyond their preference. And we'll be a church that can laugh beyond our struggle. What does that mean? It means that when you're serving, you're smiling. It doesn't matter what your week has been like. It doesn't matter what your day has been like. It doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter that you're in pain in your back and you can't actually stand up straight. But with whatever standing I can do, I'm going to smile, I'm going to laugh. On Surf Saturday, when I meet people on the streets, when I meet people in their homes, I'm going to smile. When they open their door, they're going to see a big smile on my face. We're going to have parties. We're going to have fun. We're going to have joy. Why? because we have joy and why do we have joy God is able to do exceeding there's a show on Netflix about a child who takes his life or her life I've not seen a show but there's Thirteen reasons why she does what she does or he does what he, I can't remember. I'm going to give you thirteen reasons why why you need to fix your face. Your soul should tell your face that you have joy. Your spirit should tell your face that you have joy. What you read in your devotion in the morning should tell your face that you have joy. We should, too many turn around should be like an exhibition of joy, like smiley faces. Don't tell me how hard you're weak. Tell me how faithful God is for you. Count it an opportunity for great joy. 13 reasons why you should fix your face. One, God is able to do more than you can ask or think. Number two, God will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. Number three, God watches over you and does not sleep or slumber. Number four, God is your strength and your shield. Number five, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Number six, God paid the price for your healing by your, his stripes. You are healed and healing is your children's bread. Number seven, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you number eight all things are working together for your good number nine a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand by your right side but it will not come near you number ten you are more than a conqueror through Jesus number eleven you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you number twelve God can strengthen you God can help you God can uphold you with his right hand on number thirteen Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever we are here for you come and do what you do church 
that laughs beyond our struggle. Understand the responsibility we have. We're in Glen Burnie, we're in Maryland. The opioid addiction here is at ridiculous heights. There is homelessness that the government is denying. There are people that need a smile. It takes more muscles to frown than it takes to smile. 50 muscles. It take, God made it intentional so that it's difficult for you to frown. He made it easier to smile. He made it easier to have fun. But if we're going to be that church collectively, we're going to be at the church individually that can laugh beyond our struggle. If you're in this room, and you need a dose of joy. You need a reminder of God's faithfulness. You're going through hell right now and it looks as if the hell is bigger than God's faithfulness. The word there is nevertheless. That means God's faithfulness is never less than your pain. God's healing is never less than the disease. If you need a dose of joy in this room yourself, if you could just lift up your hands wherever you are you need joy in your life something is trying to take you out mentally something is trying to take you out physically something is trying to take you out spiritually and you need a dose of joy father for every hand that is lifted right now before we step up and assume the collective responsibility of bringing fun back to a community in pain before we step up and assume the responsibility of bringing back joy bringing back party and merriment and cheerfulness and bringing back laughter and smiles to a community that is weighed down in depression right now i say that every cause of concern every cause of anxiety in our lives it dissolves under the knowing of how faithful you are may our joy run over may our joy be contagious may our joy magnify your faithfulness may our joy show that you are able to do exceeding far more abundantly that we can ask or imagine I release joy in this room in the name of Jesus put your hands together and celebrate God